And now taking a look at weather. Today is calling for partly sunny skies with a high near 84. Overnight tonight, patchy fog after midnight, otherwise mostly clear with a low near 67, and that fog will continue into the early morning hours Tuesday morning. Tuesday, we're looking at sunny skies with a high near 88. Overnight Tuesday night should be mostly clear with a low near 73, and then looking ahead to the rest of the week, sunny skies in the forecast for Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Wednesday, we're looking at sunny skies with a high near 95. Low around 69. Thursday, we're looking at highs near 90 and lows around 68. And Friday, high of 94 with a low near 73. There are mostly sunny skies in the forecast for your Saturday. Saturday, highs will be in the mid-90s. Barometric pressure currently sits at 29.89 and rising. We've got a 68-degree falling dew point with 100% humidity and visibility up to a couple of miles now. Still fog in some low-lying areas, but most of the region has cleared up. No wind, gusting between 1 and 2 miles per hour out of the north, if at all. Current time, 8.06 a.m. We've got 71 degrees here at the studio, 2 miles east of Fairfield, and it's time now for morning coffee. And good morning. Thanks for joining us. It's morning coffee time here on 104.9 FM, WFIW and WFIWradio.com. Current time, 8.07 a.m. I'm your host for the day, you lucky devils, Jeremy Smith. I'm looking across the way at Drew Pounton and Eli Grimes. Drew is drinking his Pepsi out of a coffee mug today. He said he wants <laughs> to appear as if he's drinking coffee, even though he does not. It's RC. Thank you. <laughs> he's, oh, oh, my bad. My bad. Calling him out. How oh. dare I? How dare I? So how you guys? How you guys been? Well, I was good until this moment. <laughs> <laughs> now you're ready to just walk out. Huh? Yeah. How dare you say I'm drinking Pepsi? Come on, man. Come on. What do I look like to you? It's an RC, right. man. It's an RC, dude. Come on, man. Come on. Come on, man. Come on, Come on man. man. <laughs> hey, guys. Uh, <laughs> You know, I just have to ask you something, and I know it's not Christmas time, but it's July, and you've heard of Christmas in July, so we're gonna we're gonna start off. I've got a story I want to talk about here in a second, but I want to start off first with a little poll because you guys are younger. Me and Mark have debated this for years. Okay, now I'm the old man sitting over on this side of the board, and I want to see what you two young men say. Die Hard, is it a Christmas movie? Yes or no? Ooh, see, I've heard this debate before. I have too. Uh, I I don't think so. You I don't. I, I really don't. I mean, I, I I get the the other argument, but I just right. don't see it that way. You don't see it. What about you? I've never seen Die Hard. Oh. Oh my. Well. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Moving on. <laughs> uh, that's your homework for the night, by the way. I want you to go home and watch Die Hard. Well, the reason I'm asking you this is because Bruce Willis is returning to Nakatomi Plaza, aka the Fox Plaza building, from his famous movie Die Hard. Willis's wife posted a video to social media showing him standing at the very top of the building, looking out over the city. The 67-year-old actor has stepped out of the spotlight recently after his family announced his aphasia diagnosis. That's a uh, disease, by the way, that can impact a person's expression and comprehension. Maybe that's part of my problem. Uh, Die Hard is celebrating his 34th, 34th anniversary this week, two days from now, July 20th. So... That's why I wanted to know if you guys thought it was a Christmas movie or not, because apparently it's the anniversary of Die Hard. See, that, I was trying to remember when that movie came out. Obviously, I wasn't anywhere near right. alive when it came out, but right. I don't know. 34 years old now. Hmm. Wow. He so said th- anywhere near alive. It's going to be like, <laughs> yeah, I, I did not acknowledge that. I just moved on. I'm, I'm not taking these jabs personally this morning. <laughs> Oh, did you guys hear about this uh, West Virginia woman that uh, woke up after two years in a coma? Wow. Yeah. Ooh, I think I, I've, I glanced at it, but I never I, – I seen it on Facebook. And I'm just like, it's, you know, right. kind of take it with a grain of salt. Yes. W- Wanda Palmer, West Virginia woman, had gone into a coma after being beaten in her house in June of 2020. She uh, suffered brain damage, was, but she was able to speak enough to say that she was attacked by her brother. He's now been arrested on suspicion of attempted murder and malicious wounding. Mm. So, two years in a coma 
woke up and immediately said, I know who did it. That's that's that's, that's pretty yeah, good. Yeah. That's pretty good. I mean, I can't wake up after a two-hour nap and tell you where I'm at. <laughs> I mean, seriously. I, I told you last week, Eli, about right. waking up having a heart attack because, you know, Drew, I was telling you, like, with the wife being a nurse and working midnights, the, the room's blacked out. So you can't tell what time of day or night it is in that room. Yeah. Woke up from a two-hour nap that felt like 12, saw the phone, saw the time, freaked out, thought I was late for work for like three hours. Why didn't anybody call me? Yeah. One of those moments. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Emma's so. like that too. She has to have it completely blacked out, and it it makes it so much harder to get up in the morning because it it's like it's, it, it's just that, so that sun beating through the window is what wakes you up. Mm-hmm. So when you're in there and you're like, is it is it midnight? Oh no, it's ten thirty in the morning. Yeah, hey, the sun's early this morning. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> right. <laughs> I go walking out in the hallway. I'm like, why is it so dark out here? Is it storming? <laughs> no, you moron. It's the middle of the night. <laughs> Hey guys, we need to uh, we need to get into a little bit of the bucket of bunk. So let's uh, let's do it. And it's time now for the bucket of bunk right here on the morning show on Morning Coffee. We uh, changed up that music just a little bit there. Drew looked at me like, "What is that? That's not one of mine." <laughs> no, I'm going through and doing some cleaning in the system. We'll uh, we'll talk about that in our production meeting later this week. But we're going to put some new stuff in there. Trying to go a little more straight laced. Apparently, some of the uh, humor is lost on some of the listeners, so we want to go back to what they love. We we don't want to turn people off. So I want to have you guys do some more production work for me behind the scenes and see if we can make some of these people laugh. I uh, I know that I'm not the person to do it. So today is Monday, July 18th. It's the 199th day of the year. There's only 166 days left this year. It's National Get Out of the Doghouse Day. You uh. You spend any time in the doghouse yet, Drew? I know you're still early into this whole love affair with with him and everything, but uh, many a many a nights, <laughs> many, many many a nights. Many uh, a choose nights. your next words very carefully. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Eli's like, I don't have that uh, issue. I'm a I'm a single man. No, I've actually got a girlfriend. Well, you're I not just married though. No, that's true. You're that not is married true. though. That's See, true. That's the thing. You can have a girlfriend and still be single. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Just don't tell them that. I swear to you, she just messaged me. Oh, too. No, no, no. Well, I know I just started you guys' this day off, right? <laughs> it's been another one in the pan. That's, That's right. What like. That's right. That's right. So you've been uh, you've been keeping keeping the uh, live life on the love life on the DL then. Yeah, pretty well. Uh, nothing wrong with that. <laughs> nothing wrong with that. Especially if we start running our, you know, win a date with the DJ, <laughs> you know, competitions or anything like that. Don't want people knowing. You know. Listen, yeah. you buy me Hope a steak, I'll go on a date with you. I do not care. <laughs> <laughs> Food's all it takes. <laughs> it does not matter to me. <laughs> Drew says food. He I'll says bag steak. Up. Tacos, heck, a bologna sandwich. I don't care. <laughs> Drew is not making his case any better. <laughs> and Emma just texted again. <laughs> it's also National Caviar Day. Y'all ever tried caviar? I No, but I would to. for the right price. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've really wanted to, though. I, really? I like it tastes like stuff. salty worm dirt. Oh, well, maybe. maybe. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not great. Have, okay. you ever, have you ever looked at your bait when fishing and thought, I oh, wonder yeah. what that tastes like? Uh, okay, it's about like that. <laughs> and it's like, and super I'm not going to tell you. And I'm not going to tell you why I know what bait tastes like either. So that's for a different story. <laughs> Times get tough. Drew. Yes, it is very expensive. It that's what I thought. Expensive. I remember it being like, I remember just the public yep. thing in the whenever I was growing up is that caviar is like yep. right. Like See, I was I was in a position one time to actually try some beluga caviar, and I was told this is you know top notch. It's like the best in the world. You know, you're not going to find anything better than this. They put it on their little. I guess it was like a little oyster cracker or whatever. They used this little bitty dainty little spoon, put this little bitty bit on this little bitty cracker, handed it to me. And I'm thinking, that's not enough. I popped it in my mouth and thought, well, that was way too much. <laughs> 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 I hope to never try that again. It's also National Sour Candy Day. Ooh, I love me Ooh. some sour candy. You like sour candy? Oh, What's yeah. your favorite sour candy? See, I love me some, some Sour Patch Kids and then those yeah. sour straws. Oh, okay. Ooh, Ooh, yeah. Okay. I'd be in a mood for those. I don't know. I'll... Personally, I like lemon heads. I do too. Oh, I like candy. See, lemon see, I'm a lemon head guy. That's what I was gonna say. I like. I just. I like the taste of lemon. I know it's not for everyone, mm-hmm. but I'm. Oh yeah. Lemon candy. Mm-hmm. You know, like lemon frosting, lemon cake, anything mm-hmm. lemon. I'm. I'm probably all for it. I like nice. lemon tasted stuff, but sour stuff just makes my face pucker oh, I love so that. bad. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I like. I love me. I love me some lemon. Lemon Moorheads. Those. Mm-hmm. Those are the best. Mm-hmm. I've, I would have pictured you as more of a trolley. Guy, those myself. are good too. Those, those are gummy good worms. Too. That was yeah. what that was what Vaughn usually talked about. Whatever he had the sour candy, mm-hmm. he was usually trolley. I I don't remember 
if I ever tried trolley or not, but I know that we used to have uh, uh, sour sour gummy worms of some sort that were similar. They're not similar. bad. They're not bad. But then there's those Sour Patch Kids. Those Sour Patch love, Kids love are sour really patch. good. That those was a good are, answer. Those are great. Those are great. We ought to make that one of our morning coffee trivia questions one of these days. Asking people yeah. what their favorite sour candy is. Did you see where Sonic is making a Sour Patch Kid? I think it's like a blast or yes, a, a milkshake or something like I that. I saw that. It looks pretty interesting. I thought it looked like I thought that, I thought it was fruity pebbles at first. Oh, that'd like, be good. That would be oh, good. That would be really good. I love, I love me some fruity pebbles. I do too. They sent me a big old bowl of those last night. Let's get into some celebrity birthdays. Today, turning eighty-two is Emmy Award-winning actor James Brolin. He has won an Emmy for his work on the TV series Marcus Welby, M.D. Other credits include Catch Me If You Can, The Master of Disguise, Traffic, and the TV show Hotel. He's the uh, act, the father of actor Josh Brolin, by the way, and is married to Barbara Streisand. <laughs> so there's your little nugget of knowledge you won't forget. <laughs> it's also former baseball manager Joe Torrey's birthday. He turns 82 today. He's uh, currently serving as a special assistant to Major League Baseball's commissioner Rob Manfred. He previously served in the role of the MLB's chief baseball officer from 2011 to 2020. So uh, what, what was that first thing you said, the chief, the assistant to what? He is now currently the special assistant to Major League Baseball's commissioner, Rob Manfred. Okay, just wanted to make sure he's not an assistant to the assistant to the special assistant. Uh, <laughs> an, assistant to the, uh, an assistant to the regional manager, yeah. uh, Dwight. <laughs> Also having birthdays today, Steve Forbes, publishing Magnate, is 75 years old. He's the chief of Forbes Business Magazine, obviously. He's got to be loaded Oh, you would think. You would think. You would think. Also, Richard Branson turns 72 today. He owns Virgin Atlantic Airways, Virgin Records, Virgin Mobile. You know, you have to wonder what it is with him and Virgin. I, I'm just leaving it there. I'm not going any further with it. I'm he's, just gonna, he's not going to poke the bear. He's just going right. to leave gonna, a trail. I'm just going just gonna, to just gonna tickle it a little bit here. He, by the way, ran for president twice on the Republican ticket. Huh. Really? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, no, he didn't. That was Steve Forbes. My bad. I got to learn how to read my. I gotta, I'm going to have to make this print larger. I really am. I'm, I'm going to have to start. Yeah, let me see your glasses there. Chris. See if this helps any here. For the, for the people on. YouTube enjoying this. That looks so weird. <laughs> Dude, it's actually, it actually works. Thanks. All right. Grammy Award winning musician Ricky Skaggs turned 68 today. Actor Vin Diesel is 55. You know. 55? 55, yes. What was your favorite Vin Diesel movie? And don't say Fast and Furious. <laughs> Please don't. I hate this movie so much. Oh, my gosh. You're so awful. You're bad. I can't. I feel like. I don't know. Everything's honestly, about the family. It's all about the family. I would have I to look family. up some films because whenever I envision Vin Diesel, it immediately goes to Fast and Furious. Well, he was I, in Triple X, Chronicles of Riddick, The Pacifier. He even was in Saving Private Ryan. Wow, I did yes, not know that. Yes, he had a, a role in Saving Private Ryan as well. Hmm. Drew, you look uh, you look a little blind over there, buddy. <laughs> it's <laughs> okay, just a little blurry. He's looking around the room like, wow, things look so much different. <laughs> Actress Kristen Bell is 42 years old today. She was in Gossip Girl, Scream 4, Veronica Mars, Forgetting Sarah Marshall. That's a great movie. Mm-hmm. Get Him to the Greek, another really, really good movie. Are you a big Russell Brand fan? I do like Russell Brand. I love me some Russell Brand. He's a, he's a weird dude. He's funny, though. But he is really funny. People that would have been celebrating a birthday today had they still been with us. Former United States Senator S.I. Hayakawa. I'll give you a guess where he served out of. Mm, Missouri. (laughs) You would think. (laughs) Hawaii. Singer actress Harriet Nelson of The Adventures of Ozzy and Harriet Harriet would have had a birthday today. Red Skelton, award-winning comedian and host of The Red Skelton Show. Funny, funny guy. Funny guy. He would have been uh, celebrating a birthday today, as would Nelson Mandela. Oh, wow. Mm. Yes, yes. Now, I know I keep getting sidetracked here, but Mandela, that's an interesting story. Because I recall, as a child, watching television in the 80s, and them announcing that he had died in prison. Yeah. And now, it would appear that I'm not the only one that remembers that. There's a whole lot of people online talking about this Mandela effect and about how they remember it as well. So, you know what? Just for... The proverbial squirts and giggles. If you also remember Nelson Mandela dying in prison in the 80s, give us a call here at the studio on Morning Coffee here. 
we'd uh, love to sit and talk to you about that because I know I can't be the only one that remembers him dying in prison. <laughs> is that what the Mandela effect is? That's what the Mandela uh, effect is, yes. I still say whenever they fired up that large Hadron Collider in 2012, they shifted us into an alternate universe. But you know, Now that's a rabbit hole we could, that's we could fall down. That's a big rabbit hole. We need to go down one of those one of these I days. I agree. Also, former astronaut and U.S. Senator John Glenn would have had a birthday today. I feel sorry for Jerome to give him his glasses back, even though I do appreciate it. They do help a lot. I'm about to start they're wearing not, mine. They're not super strong. No, you're not all that blind, I'm really. not, but it – sorry, I have to fix it now. But, um, <laughs> He's like, dang it, your fat face just stretched my glasses out. <laughs> no, it, it helps just, like, like clear like clear, clear right. things up. So. Right, right. Well, you know, I'm supposed to wear them, but I'm supposed to do a lot of things. On this day in history, in 1914, six United States Army planes helped form the Signal Corps Aviation Division. That's a big piece of history there for you. Here's one that you'll enjoy, being the sports director, Drew. On this day in 1921, Babe Ruth achieved his 139th home run and became the all-time run leader in Major League Baseball. His record, of course, would stand for a long time Mm -hmm. until the great Hank Aaron would show up. And, well, you know how that goes. It's history. A little more music, or music history crap. A little more sports history for you here. 1927, the Detroit Tigers baseball player Ty Cobb recorded his 4,000th career hit. First player to ever reach that benchmark. 4,000. I cannot 4, imagine that. Yes. 1936, the very first Oscar Mayer Wiener Mobile was completed. <laughs> I, uh, Legendary. I just, had to, I just had to include that. Oh, yeah. You guys ever seen the Wiener Mobile? Not in person. I, I don't think in person, no. See, it came to our it came to came to the school when I was in like first or second grade. They oh, handed man. out the little wiener whistles. And uh how often is it you get to say wiener whistle on the air and not get in <laughs> trouble for it? So I had to take advantage of that. But no, the, they pulled up out front, let all the kids do the little tour and I man, it was I don't know why it was so cool, but it was. It was very cool. In nineteen forty, F D R was nominated for a third presidential term. He would take office in nineteen thirty three as America's thirty second president. He eventually went on to serve four consecutive terms, becoming the only president to ever do so. That's something that's always been so interesting to me. Yeah, how right. that people were like, "Okay, that's enough." Like yeah, after, yeah, we've had know? enough, so now we're going to make a rule that it can't yeah. happen again. That's and you know, crazy. that's a, a smart rule. Yeah, I mean, it really sure. is going to be way mm-hmm. too hard or way too easy for one person to take power and hold power. Look what we've seen in Russia. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, Putin go from president to prime minister, back to president, back to prime minister, back to president. Him and Medvedev mm-hmm. for a while there, just flip flop back and forth. So yeah, it's a, but very fascinating to think that you know sixteen years as a six, president, right? Well, it was actually right. a little under sixteen. Okay. He got he got ill his last yeah, term in office. Right. That's what I so yeah, his his wife me. yes, and so his wife Eleanor right. actually served. Which oddly enough, we all talk about we need the first woman president. Nobody ever stops to think that really for a couple of years there, Eleanor was the first woman president. And that's so crazy. If I remember right, they kept that under wraps, they his did. illness, so they did. much. That's crazy. Well, they used to keep all that stuff under wraps, right. like Kennedy having the problems that he mm-hmm. had from, you know, from the injuries and, and the childhood, you know, ailments. Uh, you know, you wanted your, you wanted your president to, to give an air of strength oh, yeah. and mm-hmm. confidence and competency. I wonder what happened to those days. I did not know Eleanor Come ever on, served. <laughs> Do what? I did not know Eleanor ever served. I just assumed that whenever he passed that it was the vice president that served. Well, he, he, he hadn't actually passed. He was sick. Oh, okay. Fair and enough. Fair so enough. And so she was handling business. And that's another thing that always kind of fascinated me because by all rights, you're right. It should have been the vice president. Mm-hmm. But Eleanor handled a lot of the business, and she went on to be a pretty big ambassador for the United States. I was about as to well. say she was she's seen it firsthand. I mean, yes. one of the oh, worst yeah. things in history. So oh, I yeah. mean, I can assume that she did a good job. Well, fun fact: FDR and Eleanor were cousins as well. I think I did know that. Yeah, there used to be a lot of cousin loving going on in this country. Now it's just in a couple of states. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> moving on, in 1969, a car driven by a senator, Edward Kennedy, plunged off a bridge on Chappaquiddick near Martha's Vineyard, killing his passenger Mary Co. Mary Jo. Kopechny. And I actually think I said that right this time. You and the names today have just been hitting hey, them out of the park. Hey, man. You know, I had so many complaints over the weekend. I went home and I just sat and cried and read the thesaurus. <laughs> <You know? laughs> <laughs> We're going to move on here through these because we got we to gotta get to, the, uh, we gotta get to the, the sponsors here. In 2013, on this day, the city of Detroit filed for Chapter 9 bankruptcy protection, becoming the largest U.S. city to ever file for bankruptcy. The city reported $18 billion in debt. Wow. 18. I cannot imagine that, especially in Detroit where, like... The, oh, yeah, where the automobile industry yeah. was... Have, have you ever actually been to Detroit? No. Don't. Don't. 
I've heard that. There's absolutely no reason to go through there, and you are very lucky if you make it out of there. I mean, that place is a bad, bad place. Now, there might be some nice places in Detroit. I don't want to disparage the entire city, but what I saw, I couldn't get out of quick enough. Hmm. Just telling you. There are some places certain people just shouldn't go. That's one of them. It's kind of like Caprini Greens in Chicago. You know, guys like us, we don't go to Caprini Greens because we know we're going to get shot at if we don't get out of there quick enough. <laughs> Let's take a look at some of the music history that we got here. 1953, truck driver Elvis Presley made his first ever recording when he paid $3.98 at Memphis's Recording Services singing My Happiness, and that's when your heartache begins. The so-called vanity disc was a gift for his mom, and it would resurface 37 years later as part of an RCA compilation called Elvis the Great Performances. In 1968, working at Abbey Road Studios, the Beatles recorded Cry Baby Cry and Helter Skelter. One take of Helter Skelter lasted 27... Wow. One take of Helter Skelter lasted 27 foot 11 inches of tape. It's the longest Beatles recording ever. Man. That's a lot of reel-to-reel tape for one song, mm-hmm. which that's another fascinating song because, you know, it's tied to Manson. You know, go back and look at right. it. I won't get into the whole Manson family mm-hmm. thing on the air, but, yeah, it's very interesting, very interesting. Also, during the sessions at Abbey Road Studios in 1969, Ringo Starr recorded his vocal to Octopus's Garden for the Abbey Road album. Starr had written the song when he quit the Beatles the previous year and was staying on actor Peter Sellers' yacht in the Mediterranean. Man, yes. I love the Beatles, but you gotta some some of them song names are just out there. Man. <laughs> yeah, right, <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't know. Octopus's Garden, Yellow Submarine. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I am the Walrus, Cuckoo, <laughs> like, Cuckoo. Something. Yes, yes. I don't know. In 2017, R&B singer R. Kelly denied allegations that he was holding several young women in an in an abusive cult. The senior's lawyer said he wouldn't work that he would work diligently and forcibly to pursue his accusers and clear his name. I don't know whatever came of that, but <laughs> I do know that R. Kelly managed to get himself in a lot of trouble for a while there in the '90s, and uh, well, it seemed like the trouble would not stop raining down on him, like hey. a few of the women that he was with. Yeah, you see what I did there? <laughs> That's the bucket of bunk here, buddy. Uh, we got to go let our sponsors pay the bills, but when we come back. We're going to see what kind of nonsense Drew and Eli are up to this week, as well as talk a little bit more about what's going on in the local area. You're listening to Morning Coffee on 104.9 FM, WFIW, and WFIWradio.com. We'll be back in just a few moments. Finding great candidates to hire can be like, well, trying to find a needle in a haystack, but not with ZipRecruiter. Its powerful technology actively finds and invites qualified candidates to apply to your job. So while other companies might deliver a lot of hay, ZipRecruiter finds you the needle in the haystack. See why four out of five employers who post a job on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. Try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. If you're hungry for some delicious Deep South barbecue, then go down to the Big Deal store at WFIWRadio.com and purchase the $20 gift certificate for only $14. Ray Magliazzi here for eBay Motors. So you have to drive 300 miles to your cousin's wedding. Okay, so it's his fourth. But you know what they say, fourth time's the charm. (laughs) Well, here's the problem. Your tires are as bald as I am. But lucky for you, eBay Motors has tires for just about every make and model. Plus wheels, lug nuts, jack stands, and more. 122 million parts. Do they have tissues? Oh, good, because I'm definitely a crier. Get the right parts at the right prices. eBay Motors. Let's ride. Other banks go out of their way to make redeeming credit card rewards needlessly complicated, like how they require minimums or force you to use your rewards before reaching some arbitrary expiration date. But Discover isn't like that. With Discover, you can redeem your rewards for cash in any amount at any time. So you'll never have to jump through hoops. Unless you're like a trapezist, then by all means, go right ahead. Learn more at discover.com slash redeem rewards. Terms apply. 
Have you ever wondered if you're on track for retirement? How much you will need or when you will be able to retire? Hi, this is Lou Carl, Financial Advisor with FNB Asset Management. I'm here to help answer these difficult questions. Our comprehensive retirement planning services help you plan through the entire retirement process, from planning, education, and guidance to 401k rollovers and IRA transfers. We can help you plan today so you're able to enjoy your retirement when the time comes. Call 842-2109 or visit today. FNB Asset Management. Are you looking for a way to make a difference? Well, you can by providing vital supplies to the Wayne County Humane Society. Have dog chow, cat food, and litter delivered to the Pearl Fovel Shelter at 518 Southeast 4th Street in Fairfield. You can also sponsor a dog or cat by providing the funds needed for them to be spayed or neutered with the needed shots. It makes them more adoptable. The Wayne County Humane Society in Fairfield. Help us help them. Hi, this is Bill Stevens with another Time Capsule Quiz. Which month and year was it when President Ford and Jimmy Carter came out on top in the New Hampshire primary? Dorothy Hamill skated to a gold medal at the Innsbruck Winter Olympics. Paul Simon and the Eagles scored some major hardware at the Grammys. At the Daytona 500, co-leaders David Pearson and Richard Petty collided after the final turn, wrecking both cars. But Pearson managed to start up again and rattled across the finish line at a blazing... 15 miles an hour. Rich Man Poor Man became a Monday night television habit. And here's what we were listening to on the radio. That's all the help we can give you, so stay put. The answer and a little bit of the top song from the month and year are coming up. WFIWradio.com. WFIWradio.com. Your hometown homepage. February 1976. Just let your love the Bellamy Brothers and Let Your Love Flow, the top song of February 1976. This is Bill Stevens for TCapsule.com. Back soon with another Time Capsule. back with Morning Coffee here on WFIW 104.9 FM and WFIWradio.com as well as watching on our YouTube page. I want to remind everybody real quick while we've got the second that the new Wayne County plat books are now available. I'm holding one up for those that are watching on YouTube here. Head out, get you one of these. It's got a lot of great information, maps, properties, so on and so forth, some advertisement in there as well. Now keep in mind, they... Uh, some of the information might be a little off because of the way property buys and sells, but all of the information was gathered from the courthouse, so it should be primarily pretty accurate overall. So, once again, Wayne County Plat Books available. Drew, Eli, what's the big plans for the week? Anything on the agenda coming up for you guys that uh, get you all excited? Hmm. July 18th. That's July 18th, yeah. Yes. Really, no, nothing really big this week for me. Just another, just another week, week of the uh, year. There you go. What about you, Drew? Well, Emma is going camping with her family and taking our daughter. So I will oh. have the house to myself from like Tuesday oh. to Friday. Oh, so party at Drew's house. Woo! <laughs> A cleaning party is what <laughs> <I'm having. laughs> Drew says, yes, I'm going to party hard. I'm going to sit on the couch in my underwear and eat Cheetos. <laughs> and play games. There you go. What game are you going to play? Probably Stardew Valley. Sick. What's that? Stardew Valley. Okay. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I did forget. I actually have a wedding the 23rd that I really? have to go to, I believe. Oh, yep. wow. Mm -hmm. Always a bride, never a bridesmaid. That's how it goes, man. Or actually, it's always a bridesmaid, never a bride. <laughs> always, is, uh, always oh, it depends bride. on who you're talking to. Always a bride, never a bridesmaid. <laughs> I try to avoid weddings at all costs, including my own. But uh, <laughs> my wife's listening right now, and I can already... 
fill her. It's national cave. to get out of the doghouse day. Yes. You guys are just I we're know, just like getting it. further and further into it. That's <laughs> right. Thinking. That's right. It's like this isn't cozy enough for my liking. <laughs> that's right. That's right. I want it to be nice and cold out there in that doghouse. <laughs> <laughs> so Drew, you uh you supplied us with the Carnaby Square question of the day. What was that? Give us a little preview. We're not gonna get into the answers just yet, but give us a little preview. How many fish have you caught this summer? Oh, oh yeah. You know, we'll have to sit and talk about our answers here for a second, too, because uh, I've not been fishing yet this year. I've not, as a matter of fact, been fishing since my 21-year-old daughter was about three years old. Oh, man. But I will say my wonderful daughter and nephew banded together for Father's Day this year and bought me a new Zebco rod and reel and a big old box of tackle Mm -hmm. because they both knew that my old collection of tackle was in the bottom of Harrisburg Lake along (laughs) with my rod and my reel and a few other items out of the boat. It was a bad day that day. Just a big old fish, right? It was. I wish that was it. (laughs) I wish that was it. You know when they say drink or uh, boat sober? Yeah. Just boat sober. Boat (laughs) sober. Yeah. It's all fun and games until someone loses an eye or everything that they own tackle related yeah, <laughs> yeah. so they or bought both me, or both right we, so they bought, me a, they bought me a nice Zebco rod and reel i'm gonna take off and do a little fishing what about you how many fish have i caught this year that's the yeah, question yeah i've only gone one time i'm kind of in the same boat as you no pun right. intended ha, ha. you don't want to uh, be in the same boat as me <laughs> <laughs> be at the bottom of the lake right right <laughs> but i have caught three or four just little small bass just screwing around here and there bait more yeah. than anything, just chop them up, turn them into, mm. into Chad there. Yep. I'm going to say, I'm going to go out on a limb and say Drew hasn't been fishing for a while. No, I went fishing for the first time last year. So really? at that age, I will, whenever I was a kid, when I was a wee lad, I uh, <laughs> went fishing. lassie. <laughs> <laughs> I went fishing at uh, one of my cousin's lakes. I was uh, probably like three or four, and I went to, you know, reel it, throw it over, uh, and the hook got caught behind my ear. Oh. oh. So ever, you for since, life. ever since then, I've not I've been a big fisher, per, fishing person. So <laughs> I did go last year whenever we were on vacation, and I caught um, a water bottle, nice. two sticks, cool, and a seashell. Oh, always the fish, never always. the fisherman. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. That's right. I thought you were going to tell me you went to cast and you just let go and threw the rod. Because <laughs> my daughter did that. Whenever she was about two years old, I was like, you just hold this button and just fling and let go. I forgot to say of the button. <laughs> and, uh, and it dawned on me right as I saw her hand open and the pole went flying out. Ah, good job. <laughs> Here's a cane pole. Go sit on the dock. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been much of a fisherman. I I love to fish. I'm just mm-hmm. not successful at it. Mm-hmm. You know, kind of like a lot of things in life. I enjoy doing it. I'm just not all that successful at it. But you know, golf is more my speed. I love mm. both of them. However, I will say I also have a set of golf clubs in the bottom of the reservoir at El Dorado next to the <laughs> golf course. There, I have a thing about throwing. Yeah, things. Yeah. <laughs> if you go down those lakes, you're just gonna find Jeremy Smith. Everything. That's right. Well, you know, sometimes you just get to that point where you just want to wrap it around a tree, wrap that club around a tree. I mean, I don't know. I was probably 21 over on that hole. It was like a par three. Oh, yeah. <laughs> par three, oh, yeah. I'm shooting 27 or something. Like that. <laughs> I'm just like, I don't like this game anymore. And I chuck them with them. <laughs> like, can't, can't, take off. can't lose if I get rid of the club. <laughs> that's right. That's right. I'm going back to the clubhouse. At least I can sit in there and look like I'm, you know, supposed to be there. Good know. day out there, yeah. It's a great day. Great 70, day. about 70. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you might want to go get your golf cart. It's over by hole number eight. I just <laughs> <laughs> went Incredible Hulk and flipped it on its side and walked away from it. <laughs> we got a golf scramble coming up here uh, pretty soon, too, we next do. month. And hopefully, we'll be able to uh, amass our team here at WFIW mm-hmm. like we did the last season. Of course, our team now is going to have a whole new look to it. But that's all right. That's all right. We got you two, myself, yes, and J.C. Tinley. Tinsley will be our, I said Tinley. <laughs> the, the tin man, J.C. Tinsley. Tinley. So, uh, yeah, we're going to get out and try to do that again. We were last place last year. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, everybody else was done golfing about 20 minutes before we even made it back mm. to the clubhouse. 
Uh, yeah. We'll make Expect- it 15 this year. Yeah. <laughs> Expectation. <laughs> I wish I could blame it on one person, but I can't. It was all of us. We were equally awful. <laughs> you know, you see Murphy come up and JC come up, and they've got their, their nice clubs, and they're dressed for golf. I mean, they look like they're going to play golf. Mark... He looks like a golfer. He got his clubs. I come out there. I, I look like a guy with a pair of golf clubs. I don't look like a golfer by no means. And I don't think any of us, other than Mark, had a successful day out there. We come in, and Mark was the best player on our team, you know, which like, that in and of itself <laughs> is amusing because, <laughs> you know, Mark, when we first started, he's like, you're going to have to tell me where my ball goes. So I'm going to lose track of where it's at. I was like, well, someone's going to have to keep track of where my ball goes. <laughs> And I have no excuse. I just am not good. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I, I think I'm pretty okay with an iron, but anything above or below that. Right. Like, um, I think it was you I was talking to. Whenever the uh, driver I was using, it has a sweet spot. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm. like, if you don't hit it right there on it, it's just... Worthless. Yeah, so I'm like, oh, I took a couple swings off of that when I said, well, I'm not going to do this one anymore, <laughs> and I went on. There you go. See, I used to I used to love my big Bertha driver. I don't have her anymore, and I think that was part of what was wrong with my game last year. She's at the bottom of the reservoir. She's at the bottom of the reservoir. You know, so I wasn't able to pull it out in old Billy, 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 Billy. You know, I wasn't able to do that. But if it has an, if it's able to hit green with an iron, I think I'll be okay. But anything above that, I'm probably going to shoot a, probably a twelve on a par three. <laughs> I, think we should, I think we should chip it and get him one like Happy Gilmore used. Yeah, it looks like the hockey stick. Yes. but you have to shoot like Happy. You have to get a running start at it. <laughs> Listen, okay, if it makes my ball go 400 yards, it's all that matters, <laughs> right? It's right? your home. <laughs> Why don't you go, go home? Your home. <laughs> Oh, guys, we need to preview that Carnaby Square question of the day, and then we need to take another quick commercial break and then come back. And we're going to have some trivia as well. Let's uh, let's preview that Carnaby Square question one more time there, Drew. Oh, and by the way, Carnaby Square, you're a fashion leader in downtown Fairfield for 42 years. How many fish have you caught this summer? How many fish have you caught this summer? What kind of response did we get? Oh, uh, we got five questions. It was a little bit of a later question, so all it right. was my fault. Well, that's all right. We, uh... You have good days and you have bad days with them. That's the way it goes. We'll get around to those answers and a little bit more plus trivia right after this break. You're listening to 104.9 FM, WFIW, and WFIWradio.com, as well as watching on YouTube. This is Morning Coffee. Shiver in the dark, it's raining in the park. Don't miss the July celebration at Carnaby Square. A great selection from all your favorite brands. 25% off. Check out the additions to the 50% off rack. All Corky's footwear now 25% off. New arrivals in the hottest summer colors. Navy, teal, and gorgeous lemon citron. The Carnaby girls are there to help you find that perfect look for every occasion. Work, play, vacation, or that summer wedding. It's the July celebration at Carnaby Square, downtown Fairfield. Open Monday through Saturday, 9 to 5 and 9 to 7 on Thursday. Right now, you deserve the network more people rely on. That's why we're introducing Welcome Unlimited for just $30 a line per month for four lines with auto pay plus taxes and fees. Our best priced unlimited plan ever. Did he say $30? Yep, $30 a line for the whole family. The network you want, the price you love. Switch to Verizon today. Paper free billing required. Unlimited 5G nationwide 4G LTE. In times of congestion, your data may be temporarily slower than other traffic. All smartphone lines on the account must be on Welcome Unlimited and are eligible only for select promotions. It includes domestic talk, text, and data usage only. Data roaming at 2G speeds. Saturday, July 23rd, 8 to 4, the Sports Card and Memorabilia Show at the Fairfield Elks. All sports and all ages. Free entry with 30 tables of awesome items. Grab a knock-it-out-of-the-park pork burger and cold drink from 10 to whenever they're gone. It's the Sports Card and Memorabilia Show at the Fairfield Elks, Saturday, July 23rd, 8 to 4. Come out for some awesome food and be ready to buy, sell, and trade. Looking for a rewarding career with a pension opportunity? Consider joining the Rides Mass Transit District team. Rides is now offering a $500 sign-on bonus for new team members and has full and part-time driver openings in McLeansboro, Fairfield, Mount Carmel, and Grayville. Visit RidesMTD.com and click on Careers for more information. That's RidesMTD.com. Click on Careers and apply today. This is Yvette Anderson thanking you for making this year's new Wayne County Agricultural Fair a success. A special thank you goes out to this year's main event sponsors, Fairfield National Bank, Fairfield Ministerial Alliance, People's National Bank, Lamont's Motocross, Trust Bank, Citizens National Bank, and the Fairfield Banking Company. 
We also want to thank our fair board directors and officers. But most importantly, we want to thank you, the people of Wayne County who attended the 2022 new Wayne County Agricultural Fair. Your family's care team is close to home at Hamilton Memorial Family Clinics in McLeansboro and Carmine. From routine care, vaccines and DOT physicals, to disease management, x-ray, lab work and COVID testing. With nine providers and eight specialty care clinics, Hamilton Memorial has you covered. Plus, for those unexpected illnesses, our weekend walk-in clinics in Carmine and McLeansboro. Hamilton Memorial Hospital Family Clinics. Here for you now, like we've always been. Does your financial future depend on the performance of a single investment? In any type of market, allocating your investments among a variety of assets may help minimize risk. I understand the importance of asset allocation and can design a diversified portfolio based on your risk profile to help you attain your goals. For details, call me, Chris Connard, at 842-7855. That's 842-7855. Raymond James Financial Services, Inc., member FINRA, SIPC. Life well planned. And now taking a look at radar weather. Temperatures in the low 70s throughout our listening region. 70 in Mount Vernon. 71 in Albion. 70 near Carmine. Look at it. 69 in Alney and Vincennes. That's the only ones that are not in 70s. Currently, we have 71 degrees here at the studio two miles east of Fairfield. Current time is 846 a.m. And today, we're expecting partly sunny skies with a high near 84. We will see some areas of patchy fog overnight tonight after midnight. Otherwise, mostly clear skies with a low near 67. And then that fog will continue into the early morning hours on Tuesday. Tuesday, we're looking at sunny skies with a high near 88. No rain on the radar, so to speak, as we look right now, at least not in our region. A little bit to our southwest, but it will not affect us. And nothing to look forward to just yet as far as precip goes. That is weather. And welcome back to Morning Coffee right here on 104.9 FM WFIW and WFIWradio.com. A little bit of a system lock up there for a minute, but we adapt and we overcome and we are back. Drew, you had that Carnaby Square question of the day in front of you. You said that it was how many fish have you caught this year? We've already decided that for all of us, it's the big old goose egg, not a one to speak of worth bragging about at right. least. Nothing worth bragging about at least. Except for the one that got away that was this. <laughs> but uh, it what's... Was <laughs> I think it was, a, it was a... The monster. 17 <laughs> foot long, weighed 1,700 pounds. I got it right up to the boat. Uh, what's the answers for today's question? Uh, so Nate said that he hasn't caught any um, yet this year. Is that the one that I think it is? It is. I had to adapt. I had to adapt <laughs> no, and no, overcome. No, 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 no. I want it read exactly like it was. Okay. Nate, this is for you, brother. Go ahead. I haven't caught any. My buddy caught a case of crabs. <laughs> <laughs> Nate, thanks for making me laugh this morning. I saw that this morning. And I was like, I'm going to make Drew read that. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> uh, Kip said about 300, but I'll be going in the morning, so that number will go up. Nice. Mike said not enough yet. Um, Rick said that he hasn't had time to go out this year. Hmm. Um, and Stacy said 38 last weekend at Dolan's between five people. Wow. Wow, well, that's a good haul for Dolan Lake. Mm-hmm, for sure. That's a real good haul for Dolan Lake. I wonder what everybody's catching this year, though. No, all says how many they caught, but nothing says Ooh, what they caught. Good enough. I didn't think about asking yeah, that. Yeah, we should, we should ask that next time. Because I wonder how many were bluegill, how many were catfish, Minnows. how many got thrown back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. That little that little three-inch long <laughs> rainbow. 38 of yeah. them, though. Yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, you catch enough of them, you got a fillet. That's true. You know. Some fish sticks. Caviar. <laughs> Some fish sticks, you know. I, I, I personally like to get the small ones and, and fillet them and, right. uh, you know, see how many of it taste to fill up a piece of bread. <laughs> uh, usually I, I, I don't get that many, but... So, Dude, uh, fish sticks sound so good right now. Actually, like I, <laughs> Drew's like, I'm gonna stop you there. <laughs> mm, fish sticks. <laughs> I'm a bit, I, I thought, do you guys like seafood? Because I know my fiance does not like seafood at all. <laughs> you and me are both thinking the same thing. I can tell by the laugh on our face. I'm not a huge seafood eater. I do like it a little bit, but 
not a huge seafood eater, but my mind went straight to that old practical joke that oh, I yeah. used to play on my little sister. Do you like seafood? Uh, see my food. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? You a seafood eater? Yes. Really? I, I like shrimp. Um, crab is okay. Not the one that Nate's talking about. <laughs> um, <laughs> Takes a lot of those to get full. <laughs> <laughs> Catfish. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm a fish sticks. I mean, it, that's pretty good. Now, can you really consider fish sticks? Seafood? No, I just threw it out there, just <laughs> hoping to the finest of quality. Fish <laughs> right. Well, at least you didn't say tilapia or something like that. Yeah. Never right. eat. Never eat tilapia. I've had it one time. It's trash it's, fish. It's, it's like not that great, but it'll it's, get you food. it's a bottom feeding trash fish. Now, really. Salmon. Don't, Yes. Ooh, oh, yeah. A blackened like a, salmon. That's exactly what I was yes, about to say. Yes. Salmon's so good. You got to try that if you okay, have Okay, no, I haven't tried salmon yet. I finally, me and my nephew Trace finally tried mahi mahi hmm. a few months back, and oh my goodness, was it good. I, I think you told us this story. Yeah, before. that was the one where it's it's a fish, but it's a dolphin fish. Wow. But they just tell you it's dolphin, so we gave him a hard time the whole time he was eating it. Every time we take a bite, I'd be like, <laughs> I felt kind of bad, but at the same time, it was fun. You know? It tastes so good. But I'm not a huge so seafood He's person. Crying. I like Cajun. I like Cajun seafood. I like your 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 gumbos and I've your etouffees so and crawfish and mm-hmm. gator. You, you never had any of that. I've never had gumbo. Really? I feel like I've had gator, but it was one of those like beef jerky sticks and a right. No, I, that it's wasn't not the same. Gator. No, exactly. no. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> He said it probably wasn't Gator. <laughs> <laughs> There's a couple of pretty decent uh, restaurants down in Kentucky mm-hmm. that, uh, that serve Cajun food. I mean, as for what it is, it's the best you're going to get up here. Right. right. I mean, you're not going to get Gulf Coast fresh, you know, in Henderson by no, no means. But I'd love to make a trip down there and still, get oh, some yeah. of that. Still, it's, it's worth the trip just for the food mm-hmm. and the atmosphere. We got some trivia for you guys, and I'm going to try something a little different here. Mm-hmm. I'm going to see if we can... Maybe bridge this age gap a little bit on our trivia today. We're going to do <laughs> cartoon trivia. Oh. Cartoon trivia. Now, this is ranging cartoons all over the place. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, there's none of the new stuff in there. You won't find any of this Pokemon anime stuff. <laughs> Drew, says, <I'm> out. <laughs> Drew says I'm out. But but nonetheless, I think it'll be a fairly okay. easy okay. fairly easy trivia. And uh, we're, we're close enough to the end of the show. Let's. Let's just play. Let's not worry about preview, and let's not worry about none of that. Let's just let's give it a play. Mm-hmm. So, question number one to you two: What is Ned Flanders' wife's name on The Simpsons? Ned Flanders' wife. Oh yes. man, what was her name? I should say because she did yes. pass away in the show. Yes. Is it Nita? Ned. Ned. It is not. Ned and Nita. I like where you were going there. Yeah. Man. Cynthia. No, Crap. it was Maud. Oh, see, Maude. I was I was Maude. thinking of the two older ladies. Yeah. Oh no, you're thinking of Patty voice. and Selma. Yeah. Patty and Selma. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, I love Patty and Selma. <laughs> when the Tasmanian Devil made his debut on Merry Melodies, who starred in that cartoon? Bugs Bunny. Ding ding ding! It is Bugs Bunny. Do you remember? Uh, do you remember that cartoon? Not really. I didn't see. I didn't have. Whenever I was growing up, I didn't watch, have that Saturday where you get a bowl of cereal and you just watch cartoons all day. I didn't really have that. See, you that. guys were robbed of that. You guys were robbed of that 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 fun. I think it was like maybe towards the end of like, it was kind of like going out whenever we were kind of growing up kind right. of deal. Right. See, that was the greatest part about Saturday morning was Looney Tunes or Merry mm-hmm. Melodies, depending on, you know, which ones they ran. And that's another part of that Mandela effect. It used to be Looney Tunes. Now it's Looney Tunes. It used to be Tunes, T-U-N-E-S. Now it's T-O-O-N-S. Really? And see, I know for a fact it was T-U-N-E-S because Mary Melodies and Looney Tunes, the cartoons oh, featured okay. a lot of classical music and, and stuff like that. So that Mandela effect running wild all over the place. Yeah, that one's got me in a loop. Yeah, yeah. Okay, what's the real identity of the Riddler in the Batman comics? Oh, I got this. Hmm. Edward Nigma. Very good. Very good. Oh, yeah. Edward E. Nigma. Mm-hmm. All right. Flintstones, one of the most popular cartoons in history, is set in which period? Stone Age. There you go. Okay. You I, go. I, 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 I was trying to, he was about to over he was about to overthink it. He's, I was. Like, he's like, Oh god, what what the Paleolithic era. <laughs> <That's what laughs> <I was thinking. laughs> like. Right. Which musical band? Turned down the part of the vultures for the cartoon, The Jungle Book. 
Wasn't it the Beatles? Yeah, it was the Beatles. Very good. Very, look at you. Ah! Look at you over there running Benson, strong. shake me up. Wow. Wow. I'm telling you, you take off, go to corporate for one week, you come back a different man. Maybe, <laughs> so, I, need send me, maybe I need to send me up there. Before, you know? before you continue, um, <laughs> whenever we, I went to Wabash, mm -hmm. some of my buddies that were in the same class as I did not know about Hong Kong Fooey. Really? Mm. Oh, number one super guy. <laughs> I love I, Hong Kong. I Fooey. was like, ah, Hong Kong food is really good. They're like, what is that? I'm like, get over here right now. Right, we're going right, to YouTube. Right? No kidding. Man, I, Hong I, Kong I Fooey love was that classic. show. It is such a good show. I love all those old cartoons, though. Willie and the Choppers, mm -hmm. Jabberjaw. Samurai uh, Jack. Well, Samurai Jack's a little, uh, about 30, yeah. 40 years newer, but still, it's right. a decent cartoon. Yeah. That's what now, if you're going to go with that, that era, Johnny Bravo. That was oh, that was, that yeah, was my first good. thing was that's Johnny good. Bravo. Hey, mama. <laughs> I, I think that my, I think my favorite line off that cartoon was, "Hey, mama, anyone ever tell you I got beautiful eyes?" <laughs> <laughs> What's an alternate name for Mickey Mouse? Mm. What was his original name? <laughs> I feel like we both know it, but we can't remember it. Isn't it Mortimer? It is Mortimer. Yep. Yes, yeah. it is Mortimer. Because I remember, I think I read it somewhere, and I was watching, ironically enough, Mickey Mouse Clubhouse with my daughter, mm -hmm. and he's like, over there, that's Mortimer Mouse, and it's just a bigger version of him. Yep. I'm like, whoa, yep. Yep. wait a second. Yep. yep. You guys big Lion King fans? Did you watch Lion King when you was little? Yeah. Yeah? You know about the circle of life and all yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, then, let me ask you this. The word Simba originated from which language in the Lion King? Uh, it's like... Uh, Botswana. No, but you're close. Something something like that. Yeah, I... I, I that's an excellent guess, by the way. Oh, That's over my head. Tap it out on that one? Yeah. Swahili. Ah, okay. Swahili. Swahili. Okay. Swahili. Who was the antagonist in The Lion King? Scar. Okay, there you go. Yeah, I had yeah. to throw you an easy one to make you feel better about yourself there. <laughs> Which cartoon series holds the... Record as being the longest TV series and sitcom in terms of episodes and seasons in the, the U.S. Simpsons. It is The Simpsons. Nice. And they're going to be on for another, well, let's see, about five years ago they signed for another 25-year contract. That's so, crazy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, after a while they got to, I mean. You would think. They're running up to her with Bugs Bunny. Mm -hmm. I was thinking I mean, about the same thing because it's like you have got to run out of creativity right. somewhere. But I'm sure they just cycle people through. Not necessarily cycle, but like. Right. Well, you know, my thing is, is the kids are still the same age as they've always been. You know, we, you really, if you want to keep the show going, you can keep aging the kids from here on out. And you've That's got another 30, thinking. 40 years there. I would even say more than that. You just kind of like do the same thing. Like you said, like, and is that baby kids? ever going to talk? Is that baby ever going to talk? <laughs> I mean, we already know she shot Mr. Burns. So come on, come on. All right. Who was the person responsible for the original version of Mickey Mouse's voice? Huh? I want to say, is it Walt Disney? It is Walt Disney. Yeah, okay. That's okay. why I was like, I was like, it's, I was it's hoping, like a fastball. I was right? hoping you weren't going to overthink that. It was a trick question. <laughs> Which cartoon series features futuristic flying cars in each of the episodes? Jetsons. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's another good one. Oh, yeah. Okay, what vegetable type does Popeye utilize as a last minute source of strength? Spinach. It is spinach. Here's one a little tougher. You probably know it, though. It's not tough. <laughs> What's the dog's name in Tom and Jerry? Butch. Is that no. Right? No. Butch is the Butch is the puppy. Oh, oh no. What Butch is, is the puppy. Name? What's the dog's name, not the puppy's name? Oh man. No, I don't know it. You had me thinking Mickey Mouse for a minute. I'm like, oh, it's Pluto. But then you said <laughs> Tom and Jerry. I'm like, crap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I got nothing. It's uh, Spike. Oh, yeah. Dude, I thought That's I spike. pulled something out of, like, the, the <laughs> like, my brain. I got it. <laughs> and here's what I'm going to throw in there at the last minute just for a bonus question just because of some of the comments you've made. What cartoon series so showcases a fighter trapped in the future who must conquer a demon to return home? That's Samurai Jack. That is Samurai yeah. Jack. I was going right. to say. I was going to say, if you got that one wrong after <laughs> that, I was going to be like, that's it. You're fired. <laughs> Fake fan. <laughs> <laughs> I, say, I, say, I say, boy, that's the end of our show. <laughs> but uh, it's been a fun morning. Uh, it's been mm -hmm. a well, Monday morning. Fair so, enough. Fair yeah. enough. Fun as it can be. Uh, well, you know. Monday, Monday. What can you Monday, say? Monday, Monday, Monday. What can you say? But we'll be back with more nonsense tomorrow morning with Morning Coffee at the same time on the same channel.
right here on 104.9 FM, WFIW, and WFIWradio.com, as well as our YouTube page for myself, for Eli Grimes, and Drew Pounton, or Drew Pountain, as I like to say it. Thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate you listening. Have a great rest of your day. News, talk, sports, and classic rock. This is the station listened to, not just heard. 104.9 WFIW FM Fairfield, Illinois. Time now for the news.